Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome to episode number 24 of the Ask Ernst Live. Yes, that's right. Is that the correct name? I think I had so. A moment. <laughs> you did. I had a moment. You had a good save. Excellent. So, this uh, Friday again, yep. 2 p.m. Uh, live from Melbourne uh, Hearns Hobbies shop. Yep. Melbourne uh, CBD. So let's give it a few minutes. You can see a few coming online already. Tony, welcome again. G'day, g'day. Hello, hello. So lots of things happening today. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got our car. traditional car. You used to sit in there, so we'll get it's into a bit out of focus there on purpose. <laughs> this may be an easy one. Yes, that's right. Maybe because you couldn't couldn't get a camera to focus on that. Oh, it doesn't matter. It makes it more interesting. Absolutely. So uh, again, very busy week. We had a quite Has a few a things, week. quite a few deliveries, which is very exciting. Yep. So, so we've got quite a few RC cars. Lots more stuff from Japan. Yeah, that's right. That we couldn't get through uh, all last, last time. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. So. Where should we start? Should we start with the competition, actually? Yeah, let, let's talk about the competition. So the competition this time around is about uh, Hearn's Workshop. So uh, all you need to do is get some Hearn's Workshop bits and pieces, put them into a model. Uh, so it could be just a single model or a diorama or whatever, and then submit them to our events page. Yep. Just pop them up in the uh, discussion area with photos and a description of which bits you used and um, a description of your model. And then we'll judge it on three uh, well, there'll, there'll be three categories and um, so as with all our other competitions yep. so every entry adds five dollars to the, the prize, prize pot. pot yeah so that particular pot as it goes up with more entries that'll be split three ways evenly for this competition so it'll be one for um, our best overall model using Hearns Workshop bits and then there'll be one uh, for the most Hearns Workshop bits used and yep. then the other one will be the most uh, creative Absolutely. use of Hearns Workshop very good. So yep. we have a few new Hearns Workshop parts. Yeah, these are uh, good. Uh, we have the skulls, and these are in 35th and 40A scale, so they're quite tiny actually. Yep. Um, so they come in a set, and there's uh, I think 24 in 40A scale, and there is. Um, let me jump on this one here on the side. Yep. Okay, yeah, you see. can get a really close look at them. You'll see how clean the detail is on these. Let me see. Put a bit of focus this way. Yep. There we go. So, so on the actual um, 3D file, it, it has all the, um, uh, what do you call it, fissures and, and stuff, the little lines around the, uh, the skulls. Hard to see at this particular point, um, simply because uh, fresh can, prints are fairly semi-transparent as well. You can see them on this print here. Probably not through the camera, perhaps. So they're all the fracture of the skull here. Yeah. Different bones. So oh, they're the two most common sizes that we uh, could work out. So 35th scale obviously for military uh, dioramas and such. So they're the larger ones. And then the small ones are 40 scale and they're actually perfect for the wargaming type size. So wargaming would be around about 48 to 56 scale. So they're perfect for all of those. So you can imagine just chopping those up and uh, making little stacks of them or adding one to a particular just a, a single figure um, base. I just enhance any sort of um, model. Definitely. So, yeah. these are ready to go now. Oh, here we go. I lost one already. Oh, you lost your head. Yeah, I lost my head. Yep. So, that's ready to go. But we also have some uh, dogs. Yes. So, we just um, worked on some of the uh, German Shepherds uh, just the other day. And so, this is the first print. So, these are, these are the 35th and the 48th ones, are they? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So, the taller ones there, they're the 35th scale. So they come, they will come as a, um, a two dog set with one slightly different size to the other. So uh, you, you have your choices of either using one each on a different model or you can use both of them and they'll look different rather than clone twins. So they've got really fine detail as well. The, the head particular is really impressive. Um, yes. You've got a lot of fine detail which is very, very German Shepherd. Um, and then they're in their, uh, I guess a very common sitting pose. So it'll be quite easy to incorporate these into any model. Definitely. Hmm. There you go. So, so I'm pretty sure both of these are available on the web now. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 And so with the competition, we're offering a 25% discount on any of the Hearns Workshop items that you Absolutely. order online. So remember to use the code. So I think we're popping up the code um, with this live. And also, if you just look at the competition, we've got the code listed there as well. Listed there. Yeah. 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 Uh, so make sure you use that to. Um, uh, make full use, even if you yeah. don't enter the competition, at least you'll be able to try out some of the uh, Hearns Workshop Absolutely. stuff at a really good price. Very good. Mm. So, 
I have this one here. I went back racing last week. Yeah. So as the restrictions are easing, obviously we are back into racing. Yes. So on road started a few weeks back and yep. off road as well. So yep. last week I ended up uh, going up to Kilo with a with a Yakima YZ4 SF2. So mm -hmm. it was a very good uh, very good day. So for the rest of the year they're going to open Saturday and Sunday. Obviously limited numbers, still up yep. to 20, 20 people divided in two groups of ten or something yep. like that. So very very well organized. So if you are keen on going back racing, just. Uh, Look for uh, the Kilo Club up in uh, on Facebook, and yep. you see all the details of um, of the club days and so forth or yeah. the events. That's really good. It's really important because Absolutely. it's such a social thing, and people haven't been able to get out we there. We definitely so miss that. So mm. on road and off road, they're all back up and running um, for practice and uh, and some uh, some racing. So here we go. This is the Yakon Waze for one ten scale buggy. And what else? The car. Oh yeah, we just briefly talked just about briefly the car. So about okay, the car. so like normal. We've got our 18 scale diecast car here. So, on the chat, give us your ideas of what it is. So, if you can start off with what model that is, yep. what year, and finally what the color is. Which is not as simple as, this, as it looks. That's right. And if someone guesses it really quickly, we'll just think of something else that you have to guess. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Very good. So, last week we uh, were talking about the stuff that arrived from Japan. Yes. Just last minute, yes. so we have a few more. We have a few more. So this still isn't all of it, but I thought I'd bring out some of the bits that look pretty interesting. So there's a little bit of a mishmash of stuff. So we showed most of the um, the mech stuff uh, last week, but there was a little bit of mech stuff here. So this is actually a um, uh, reissue of one of the Nito kits. So this is one of the classics. Yeah. So the AFS uh, suit, so you see on the back there. So this is all the original artwork from um, Kao Yokoyama. Now this particular suit is one of the suits that I made when I was a kid too. Because right. back in the day the Nito stuff used to be quite easy to come by. But it's getting a bit harder now, but it's getting a little bit easier since it's been reintroduced by Kao Yokoyama. So there's that one there. Uh, a few more um, frame arm girls. So you got this one. It's quite a big Continuing box there. the tradition. Yep. Yes. That's pretty full. Yes. So you see that's the basic figure design here. So I don't know, what do you call this one? Cat girl? So she's called Leticia. Ruby, so Ruby must be the color I'm guessing. But if you see on the side there, there's a lot of options. Oh, yeah, lots of other So elements. you've always got different face plates. Yeah. Um, different decals for the eyes, and then different um, clothing and such. So uh, very I, interesting kits because as you build them, you can take different directions and complete them with in different uh, different configuration. Actually. Yeah, that's right. And then you see a lot of these being used for stop motion. Yes. As well, so yes. they work really well with stop motion. So we've got that one there. And that's slightly different. Um, I, I really can't pronounce that. There's, there's too many consonants in oh there. Oh dear. Yes. Well, it's Velga. Rufus, it's maybe. Well, someone's going to correct me anyway. But she's quite interesting too. So similar sort of thing. Very thick box. Lots of, lots of um, options. Parts. Yeah. yeah. So you can get these with a the thinner box, which is about half the size. But yeah. it's a very basic kit. This has got all the different armaments. Okay, so we've got that one. And something some different cars. again. Some rare stuff. So we've got the uh, James Bond... Submarine by Fujimi. So this one um, uh, was one of the first James Bond movies I saw as a kid at the cinemas. So this is from The Spy Who Loved Me, and this got me loving Lotus Esprits. Right. So now Lotus Esprits are they great? But I still love this. So That's just it. the way this converted into a submarine it was special. It was. And you know, the rockets coming out the back. That was awesome. So it was that, and then something a bit different too. The Fujimi Picru set. So Picru. Picru. That's very good for yeah. dioramas. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. So they're a bit hard to come by, so we've got some of those that came in. And then finally we've got this Nissan Mid-4. Now I can't remember if this was actually a production car, but I think it was a, a prototype. Prototype, yeah, which I evolved think so too. into something else. So this would have been, oh, I guess GTR times, 1990s. Mm, yep. Yep, late 80s. So we've got those kids as well. So let's Big go selection. through. Yes. So uh, that's, the, that's the Japanese stuff, but there's a lot more. So you'll be able to see the full range online. Stay here. Yep. Oh, well, so there's one more. Oh yes. This is a Zoid. Bit of, bit of a Zoid. Yep. So we've got the Zoid Molga uh, anti-aircraft and Molga carrier. So we've had these before, but they've just been re-released. So these are back in stock too. So let's see if we get this car going. Let's bring it up so be more in focus on this side. Yes. Let's see if we can get any guessing here. I can't show the front or the back because it's too obvious. Um, because it's fully written what it is. But um, you should be able to work it out from the side, or even the top. There we go, Maybe. this way. 
Maybe. Hopefully. That's it. I can tell you it's not a Japanese car. Definitely not a Japanese car. No. That's not a Japanese car. So, no. other interesting uh, delivery for the week is the green stuff. So that's the second second restock of green stuff. It is. The first round went surprisingly well, and so we expanded the range again. We did. So, lots of interesting small yeah, little, accessories little, little and tools. And pieces and that help you do all sorts of things that you never really even thought about. Absolutely. So obviously, green stuff, they're famous for green stuff. So, that's your shopping you, basket. Yep, so I've got all sorts of bits and pieces. So, if, you, if you're not familiar with green stuff, green stuff is this ribbon putty. Yeah. So, it's an epoxy putty that hasn't been available in Australia uh, in consistent um, supply for a very long time. Absolutely. Now, it's very popular in Europe and very popular with traditional sculptors because even though milliput is easy to get here, milliput feels quite different to green stuff. Right. So, milliput is uh, a grainier feel and uh, green stuff has more of a plastic feel. And some people even mix the two to get the consistency they want. So that's the green stuff. So you can mix the millipart with this one? Yes. Oh, okay. And, and you get a halfway um, uh, texture. So yeah, so quite, you, you might notice that on some of the uh, prototype uh, right. molded, uh, like sculpted figures, the guys would tend to use green stuff for more of the fol flowing bits, like on uh, clothes and such. So yeah, green stuff, very popular. So you can get that in different lengths. Yeah, there's a small one, there's a big, big tube. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that, obviously. The next um, popular thing is the blue stuff. Okay, so blue stuff, we had to get back because um, it was so popular. Now blue stuff, you get in the two packs. So that's got four sticks in it, and that's the eight stick one. Now blue stuff, if you don't know, this is quite revolutionary as well. So it's a thermoplastic that you put into hot water. So you just yep. get a glass of hot water, drop right. it in there, goes all soft. And then when it goes all gooey, you pick it up and you push the bit that you want to replicate into it. So right. it'll cool down and it'll keep that shape within it. So once it's cooled down, you can just put some milliput or you can pour some plaster Plast. or other yeah, yeah. sort of copying material into it. And when it sets, you peel it out and it's, it's a copy of, yeah, it's of what impressive. you want to do. So you can do one piece molds to one press and you can also do two piece molds. So when that one sets, heat the other bit and squeeze and it together. Squeeze the other side. Yep. So that's blue stuff. Now, apart from that, some of the new stuff we've got, we've got some scale barbed wire. Very nice. Yep. Very useful, actually. Yeah, so I mean, barbed wire, trying to make it yourself is just painful. And this is a really good, quick replicant. Yep. Yeah, you probably see a bit more detail just on that Sticking camera. On this side. Yep. There we go. So, it's very good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite dumb. There's quite a lot in here, actually, as well. Yes. Yeah, it's a big so. roll. There we go. Okay, so something different again. We've got the uh, middle foil. So this is actually white metal. It's pewter. Right. And this is designed to, you can either put it through the corrugator, which we've got a little roller, which looks like a pasta roller, or this sort of stuff you can use like the old uh, lead foil. So there's a number of um, uh, sheets in here. If you just cut down little strips, you can use it to um, replicate the gun slings, um, pack um, sort of uh, uh, straps and things like that. So that's really handy. Uh, we've got some of the molds as well. So here's yep. just one of them. So that's a brick mold. So this is designed to take either um, uh, plaster of Paris, plaster. Yeah. or we've got the um, green stuff, um, acrylic um, molding stuff too. So you just mix it up water, put it in here, let it set, and then you just press them out and you've got a whole lot of little bricks. And there's quite a few different molds too. So different shaped bricks, different sort of tiles and such. Uh, let's see, uh, we've got rollers as well. So this this is, might be hard to see, but this, this particular one, go here. so it's a Perspex um, texture roller. So the whole idea is you use it like a rolling pin like you use in a kitchen. So you roll out your putty like the green stuff. Um, Can you yeah, you should be able to pop that open. So you put a little bit of... Um, Actually quite well uh, uh, What am I looking for? Word. Uh, baby powder. So you use baby powder as a, uh, a lubricant. So you can put baby powder on the roller itself and sprinkle a bit on top of your putty. And when you roll over the top, yeah. the putty won't stick to this, but it'll leave the imprint in the putty. So you can quite easily make um, uh, single figure bases with this and you just cut them out to size later. Or you can do a whole diorama setting with these. So there's a whole lot of different patterns. This particular one is um, tank tracks. So when you roll it out, it appears to be tank tracks all over a, uh, a muddy ground. But there's also uh, different brick uh, rollers. Yeah. Um, Cobblestone. Yeah. 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 Very, very useful. Okay. Uh, let's move on. We've got the, we've got the tiny... Magnets. magnets which are really really popular 
So these ones are three by. These are one mil ones. One mil. Yes. Yeah. So, so a, a few lot of different the, ones. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of the games like this because you can use it for um, detaching weapons and arms, change yeah. them around. Yeah. So there's a pack there. There's a pack of uh, fifty. Yeah, it looks quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. It's quite a few. Yep. And then we'll get into some of the tools, which I've just dropped all over there. So obviously with green stuff, they'll have uh, the tools to to suit. So we've got um, some of these ball tools here. So they've got ball ends on them. Everything is different size. So they're good for doing creases uh, or sculpting um, uh, softer curves like uh, fabric. So you can see how the large one, the smaller one is probably close to a mil or mil and a half. And okay. each end of these um, uh, sticks different has a different size. size. Yep. So along with that, we've got the ribbon tool. So the yep. ribbon tool is, you've probably seen that if you were a kid doing um, clay modeling. So you've just got the wire cut. So you just drag it across the surface and it peel up a, a piece and, and shape it. And then we've got this one, which is the dental type pick. So between the three sets of uh, shaped tools, you'll be able to sculpt anything you like. And especially now where um, customizing is becoming easier and easier, these tools just make it a little yeah, easier absolutely. too. And then, actually there's a, a smaller smaller set. set. Yeah, this one's got a few more of the uh, sort of little pallets and knives on it. And you go on this side. Yep, so a few little flat sections. It's a bit different. And then we've got this scratching type set. So this is a tool with, uh, it's got different inserts inside, yep. which are like a wire brush, fiberglass brush. And these are for, um, after you've sculpted your putty, you will use this over the surface to give it like a hair type texture or a fabric type texture. And so here you've got the five different colors for five different inserts to give you a different texture. And it's actually quite useful because as you, you open them up. Yeah, it retracts. It retracts so like as, that. A, as that wears, so you probably only use the tip of it, but then as it wears, you just extend it out and... Um, so you probably start very little like this, yes. very short, and then as you go along, yep. you can extend so, it. So. so that'll last a long time. And um, you can get um, refills with these as well. So that's that. And then the chain, the really fine chain is really popular. Ooh. So we've got the one and a half mil chain there, but they also make a three mil chain. So for all the gamers out there, you always need chain. You can never get enough chain. For the uh, armor modelers, chain hanging off a vehicle always looks, looks cool. Really good. Yep. Um, and then we've got our full selection of blood? blood and the bile, which is pretty gross because the bile just looks like looks like vomit. So somehow they've done these so they're, they're semi-transparent, but they've got semi almost chunky looking bits, but it's yeah, not chunky. consistent. Yeah, yeah. So it gives that um, a really great depth of um, of color just to make everything look more gruesome. So the blood's available in your standard blood and then coagulated blood, which looks darker. Darker, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got your bile, which has got that yellow base in it, and then the green. So as you shake it up, it just, I don't know, it just looks terrible, doesn't it? But, um, but that's that's what you need for all your your, your gruesome looking figures. So they're a must have item. And then something a bit different, we have got the UV resin. So this is a pure, clear UV resin, yeah. available in different sizes. So in conjunction with that, you'll probably use this UV torch. UV light. Yep. Yeah. So when you apply this, you use it for water effects. So when you put it down, right. it doesn't matter how long you leave it, it'll just level until yep. it's natural with gravity, obviously. And then when you're happy with it, you just yes. zap it with the light. You're done. Yep. And it's set. Yep. And if you want to do drips, you just add a little bit to, say, a tooth. Yep. And it'll hang a little bit. And right. then you zap it, and it'll be frozen in. Wow. And you just keep on adding that until you've got really long lengths. And then... Um, you can just do really thick as well and do very uh, thick water effects. So that's that. And then the last thing I picked out was this um, uh, spider serum. So it's quite special in that um, you put this through your airbrush and as it comes out, it creates a spider web. Wow. So, I mean, I, I don't know how else you would replicate that. It, no, it would have to be. Special. That's the only way to do it. So you just, it needs a bit of practice and then you just spray it in certain spots and it just gets webby and webbier. We should definitely have a go at this one one day. Oh, I think so. I'll spray it on someone's yeah. face. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so that's my selection so far of For green today. stuff. Yeah. There is a lot more actually. There is. There's so much. a huge delivery, but uh, that's that's a bit of a sample. Yeah. Just to give you that's a, the, how different everything can be. Yeah. The, this broad spectrum of products they have is phenomenal. Yes. And it covers quite a few different areas because you can use this for diorama, but also for modern railways and all kind of different uh, modeling. Yeah, that's right. 
Here we go. Yes. I'll ask a question myself. Sure. Um, with the UV light and the, the, the UV clear that you were talking about, yes. What's, do you know what the average curing time is? Like, is it usually a flash curing or does it take a, around a minute or so to actually dry on the I think skin? it's just a matter of seconds uh, because you just, you just put it around until you feel the firmness of it. So obviously if you only got a little bit, like a small drop, it'll cure faster than say a larger oh, area. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So if you poured it all into say a little cup and it's really thick, it'll need a bit more before it'll be fully cure. Yeah. But because it's, it's perfectly clear, it doesn't have any dye in it, yeah. it will cure pretty quickly. Ooh, yeah. So meanwhile, we, Tony, I think has uh, the answer about the car. So we know it's a Monaro HJ GTS. Is it? Or should a nice Ferrari? No, it's not. Yeah, a Ferrari yellow. No. And it's got a color as well. Oh, is he? Absinthe yeah. Yellow. Absinthe oh, wow. yellow. That's I impressive. That. I thought no one's going to get that one. No, 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 definitely not. So, that's a 118 scale again, as mm. usual, from Classic Collectible, and it's a new, new release. Yes. That came in about a week ago. Yep. All right, there you go. Very nice. Well, let's see the front now. Very nice, as usual. We may be able to open doors. Yep. There you go. Parked. Excellent. Very good. So, what do we have? I've got lots of stuff. Good Sleeping. Day. Yes. So, we received some... Yeah, new yeah. products for us, very new. We, we haven't had blocks before. Well, no. we actually had the nano blocks, for a matter of fact. Yes. So this is the next size up to the nano blocks, perhaps? It is. So I guess this is more of a standard sort of size of uh, building block system. Yeah. The, the great thing about this stuff, though, is it's very concentrated on a lot of military, I, I think military and mechanical, mechanical type mechanical things. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the ship is, uh, so this is one of their bigger sets. So yeah. 1 to 170 scale. So you can imagine, I mean, it's, it's going to be big. It's, it's 40 centimeters long. So it's going to be similar size to this box and then similar sort of height as well. Um, it, it's compatible with the uh, most popular, popular building blocks. Uh, systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it comes with like minifigs as well. So this might be a bit easier to see. It's a bit bigger here. There's a little, yeah. a little dude there. So he's dressed up as a sailor. So obviously sailor belongs on a ship. It'd be a bit weird if that was a racing car driver, but um, You've got all different things. So we've got a whole lot of military stuff. Yeah, which is, helicopters which, and planes. Yes, which tanks. is very unusual for yep. uh, this kind of block step system. So yes. it's very similar to, you know, our ranging plastic kits replicated into blocks. Yeah, which is good for younger ones. Yeah, there's play sets too. So I have multiple vehicles in there, so you can battle it, battle it out as well. But there's a huge Titanic, which looks quite yes, spectacular. Yes, Titanic. Yes. And definitely. then military-wise, there's a big um, uh, aircraft carrier too, which as looks well. a bit like the Enterprise. Wow. Yeah. Big range. Hmm. Big range. So that's one of the bigger ones. You can get really small boxes too, and I think they start from around about twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, yeah. Yeah. They're not pretty expensive. Yeah. Perfect for Chris Kendall. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, so that's good. I like that. Very good. Alright, so let's park this aside here, because I think we've got a bit of a some big cars coming up on the table. Big cars. Yes. So what you see up here? Corali. So Tim Corelli. There's a bit of history behind Tim Corelli. There is. So Tim Corelli um, was a Dutch company that specialized in competition ready control cars. Absolutely, the pen cars and touring yes. cars. So they were multiple world champion or European and world champions with um, their tall scale stuff. Absolutely, pen yeah. car, pen car, they were very, very uh, well known for that. Yes, and uh, they, they had the very unique designs of the front suspension that no one else ever had and also the rear pod, which was uh, an oval type tube. Yes. And they've evolved, I think, to the point where they've got these big Bashing type. I, I think now. in the early 2000s they, they stopped manufacturing the racing stuff and they start back recently, I think a year or so ago, yep. with a Team Corali ready to run range. Yep. And this is the second take, so there was the first run last year and then they've done some revisions and this yep. year they have a brand new range of 6S yep. trucks and also the little one 110 scale, which, which we've been selling since uh, last year. So let's have a look at the Kronos, Python, and Dementor. So, be huge. All right, so we've got the Kronos here. So that's a Kronos. So Kronos is a Truggy. Yes. So it's basically the same sort of dimensions as an A-scale comp it, Truggy, which is yes. probably a little bit bigger, I guess. Bigger wheels, perhaps. So we actually had a bit of a um, unboxing and review last year. At pretty much at the same time, we went down at the skate park actually, oh, and uh, we tried to crush it and break it. It was really good fun. Very um, tough these things. Very very tough. So these are 6S capable. Uh, they can go 
well over 100 k's an hour. Yeah. Which is a crazy speed. Yeah. So, um, this model for 2021 has got quite a few updates. Yep. First of all, brand new body. Yeah. And the bodies are really thick. So really thick body. So, that. once you go that fast and you crush it, the body's going to break. So, by putting a fin at the back here, they increase the stiffness of the bodies, which should withstand crashes a bit more. Yep. But they also added a body clips attached to the body, which is, which is yeah, that's nice. handy because very handy. I mean, when you do it like this, there's very little chance of losing them. When you got them separately, you guarantee to lose one at least. Absolutely. Uh, every every couple of times you and use because them. you're always in the you know in the dirt or in the grass, you pull yep. out your body. Yep. Body clips always get lost in the yeah, in the grass. Then they updated quite a few things. Yep. Um, there was a couple of weak spots, like on every car. I mean, when you have cars going this speed, something will break if you yep. crash. Yep. But they upgrade the front bracing. The, the way. Yep, so from the front gearbox. Yeah, absolutely. This part has been improved. Yep. Because um, when you do big jumps and you land it with the front end, you definitely need to have some stronger support here. Yep. Uh, I think there's some modification on the upper arms here to make them more resilient. Yep. Out of the box, there come some very nice one made metal shocks. They're, they're, are, they're pretty massive bore, aren't they? Probably 16 mil bore or so. Big shocks. Um, the other thing they've changed, which uh, which is actually quite welcome in my opinion, are the rear camberlings, which are in one piece. So they used oh. to have traditional metal camberlings yep. with a plastic ball end. Yep. And I actually brought quite a few of those, because when you have a big tumble at yep. high speed, you, you strip them. Yep. And having one piece, I think, is going to be a lot more uh, solid. Well, you've got you, the advantage of them being flexible. Exactly, yes. Yep. You may not be able to adjust them as much, but it probably doesn't really matter for this type of... Uh, of trucks really I mean you're not gonna adjust the camber as much as you do on a on a race truck no that's right no that's true so that's a that's that's a very positive uh, improvement um, I think the wing mount looks looks different and definitely beefier yeah it's, than it's ever been that's improved and I think this even this part here the, the rear bracing looks looks different I launched my car down a bit of a half pipe and it went really really high and it when it landed yep i bent the rear drive shaft it was oh, a big, right. big flight so that that probably will prevent that type of damage it looks like it goes all the way to the center of the car now i don't think it ever went that far uh no it didn't uh i think it was pretty long but i think there's there's more there's two big ones here which are oh, really biffy yep and the center one that goes all the way to the middle yeah stops all the flex across here absolutely so it's a 150 amp speed controller yeah that's pretty with sizable. a i think is it 2600 kb from memory does yeah, it say 2050 2050 yeah yeah kb motor which oh, is yeah. going to produce yeah negative amount of power yeah um not sure there probably are other updates something i've been reading is that they improved the differentials and they come out of the factory with a much thicker defoil okay which makes sense yeah the biggest challenge was in the previous model were the wheel ballooning big time mm. and when you start putting 6s it was quite unmanageable so thicker defoil it should make yep. it for a much more manageable uh, power. The wheels, the tires are still the same, really grippy. Yes. Um, good and bad. Yes. I think they tend to you know, grip well when you want to go straight and when you want to turn, it's going to traction roll a lot more. Yep. But good option. Yep. So, think Corali Kronos. I think we're going to take it out again next week. Oh, so it's a review. beast. It's a beast. It's the best, definitely. So. so, you can see there from the design of the, Actually, the overall chassis this is also new they've got a skid plate oh they have oh you need the skid plates because you're going to be bashing all sorts of things absolutely very very nice actually because otherwise you'll be losing all those screws they'll be all worn down to the head yeah very well made actually yep. very well refined because you've got a screw with a washer on here yep. countersunk very well designed and then you've got your um your center chassis down there you got your side pods yeah it's very good I have a question for you guys, um, to the fans, to the viewers, obviously. Yeah. Um, with with these Team Corelli ones we are talking about, yeah. do you need anything extra with them, or as they're ready to run, is everything included in the box? Definitely. So, it includes um, all the motor and the ready control equipment and speed controller, but the batteries are not included because it lets you choose the combination that you want to do. Yeah. So, you can either take it tame, or you can go all out, and with this particular one, you put 6S in it, and that's where you're doing 110 kilometers an hour. Absolutely. But 110 kilometers an hour isn't for everyone. Definitely not. No. A and in my experience, needs some setting up as well, because yes. as you go at that speed, you need to be able to control the car. Yes. Uh, or actually, the car tends to unsettle quite a bit. So in my experience, this type of cars, they go really well for us. Yep. Very manageable, good fun. Yes. When you go 6S, I think you need to be prepared 
you know, doing some um, some adjustments. You know, you probably have to lower the front end, perhaps, no. uh, and a few other things. Yes. The Duke, does it come with a wheelie bar, this one? No. Not no wheelie bar, no. no the wheelie bar is definitely the, um, optional, and it's something you probably need to have if you want to experiment on 6S. Yeah, the torque out of these is amazing. It's phenomenal. It was a really yeah, good fun. Just pick up like this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool, so then they have the shorter brother. Yep, so that's a Kronos. So you can see, just, just notice the, the width between the wheels there. And so and then here we have, actually keep, put, it, put it here again so you can see, shorter version, which is the Dementor. So I think the Dementor is a really good name for that. Definitely, look at this. So it's pretty much the same car, but shortened. Very, very aggressive. So, so when you see it from here, you can see the track width compared to the wheelbase. It's, it's almost pretty much square. square. Yeah. yeah. So this will be a really nimble and it'll keep you on your toes because you'll be wanting to go everywhere. And because it's so short, you've got all that, that leverage yeah, of wanting absolutely. to always wheelie. In fact, this one does come with a wheelie bar yes. at the back here. Yep. And I'm pretty sure you can buy the same wheelie bar to install on the, on the Kronos. Yep. But that's what you expect on this one. Yep. You'll all be definitely using this wheelie bar quite a bit. Yes. Is your uh, fifth wheel. Again, the body's been updated with this nice uh, body clip holding system. They've got this uh, kind of roll cage, which I think is going to be quite handy to prevent squashing and crushing the body. Yep. And here we go. Same again, pretty much the same construction. Not much of a difference, same electronics. Yeah, the shorter. One thing I've, uh, I forgot to mention, they do come with sway bars actually, which, uh, which uh, is very, very helpful. So a sway bar will help the handling yeah, considerably, definitely make it stable. specifically when you have these big grapey tires, otherwise mm. you're going to traction roll a lot more as well. Yes. So here we go, that's the Mentor, so, same system with the, uh, with the skid plates on the, on the chassis, which yep. reduce the wear and tear. Here we go. I think we may go for this one this time around. You want to go Dementor? I think we could probably take the Dementor on the, on the skate park. Go Dementor. Let's get Demented. Yes. Let's see which one which one goes goes best. And so uh, this complements the range really well. So we've got mm. a couple of different options here. Again, I think this is going to be very exciting on, for us. It's going to be quite quite uh, quite nimble yeah. and, and fast to drive yeah. around. Yeah. Especially if you want to steer at high speed. Absolutely. Definitely. It's easy going to, to be drive. interesting. Yeah. We could probably try with some sweep terrain crusher mm. tires, which which are going to be probably a bit smaller, but will uh, will give you a bit more control. Uh, I think less uh, traction roll. Yeah, a bit more control. So, so this is uh, these are the two big trucks, and then they have a buggy version as well. Yes, which is very similar to a race buggy, electric race buggy. So let's yes. put this aside and I'll bring the buggy. So that's a Python. That's a Python. Here we go. So Python with a really aerodynamic body. So definitely the body's been updated. The yep. old body was a bit more like rear cab and this is cab forward, yep. a bit more uh, modern. Yes. It's a very kind of egg type shape, very yeah. aerodynamic. Yeah, I guess that adds your strength too. It feels pretty firm. This body is really strong actually. Hmm. So same system with the body clips, which yep. is really nice. Venting holes on the body. Yeah. Okay, that's your body here. And apart from that, looks very, very similar. So you've got like a nice... So the center part of this and the gearboxes would be the same as Absolutely. the Dementor. Yes. But it's just got the narrower arms on it to bring back the proportions. Definitely. Same system with the, the turbo coils, which are plastic. Yep. Again, I think they're going to add to strength, actually, to yep. these cars. Specifically, the same motor. Same, same motor, wow. Mm. Yes, it's 2050, same motor 4S or 6S capable, so lots of speed. So this can be really good fun. This is going to be a nice little speed run as well. Speed demon, yes. Is this going to be ready for the... What, the velodrome? Velodrome. Oh, there could be a... This a could be a velodrome. The velodrome. Velodrome. Yeah, uh, kit. that'd be as, easy to set up. As you can see, um, same um, wing mount as well, which is extremely well built. Yeah, you can see from the back there, it's a very strong unit. Because Almost that's going to be this. copying most of the... Uh, yeah, when the, you tend to crash, you always end yeah. up front wheel and then boom. Yes. And that normally generates some damage. I think the aluminium servo horn is quite a nice touch. Definitely, the aluminium servo horn is, is very good. It's very useful. Yeah, because, because that's going to take quite a bit of um, stress yeah, as well. Definitely. A and also, at high speed, there will be lots of flex. If you have a plastic one, yes. chances you're going to strip it are very, very high. So, 
plastic servo horn on this type of cars will not last very long. XT90 plugs, which are really good. When they, you have this really much power, you definitely need to have some good plugs, and XT90 is a good option. Rock solid, those are. Huh? Absolutely. Never so. come loose, so I've never seen any of them melt together. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, what else? Sway bars. So yes. I had to admit the shocks are really nice. They're really well balanced. Yeah, they feel really they feel supple. really really soft. So in construction production, they, mm. there's definitely good attention to detail on, the, on these cars. They look really neat and tidy. Just out of the box. Mm. Uh, that's the battery tray that you can actually adjust. There's some adjustment on the battery tray. So if you have different type of batteries or battery sizes, you can make them all fit without having to do too many uh, modifications. Uh, it's very very clever. It's definitely, definitely. evolved. Definitely evolved. So it's good to see that um, they had a very good success with the first uh, round last year, and, uh, and there were a few weak points, and they've been addressed already within 12 months. Yeah, which is really positive. So full range in stock at the moment. Yes. So pop around and have a look at them. Yeah. So we got them out on the floor. So if you want to just compare them, definitely you can see immediately just by having them next to each other, which is going to suit you better. You know, the sheer size of the the, the huge. Definitely cross or the, the smaller and nimble the um, python python or if you want to go a bit crazy you go for the dementor which is the absolutely the shorter, shorter wide one. one this one here do we have any questions at all on this ones nothing so far no there questions go. everyone's good everyone's good i think it's cool. because these are just very solid units in general absolutely these are good fun <laughs> so oh, yeah. you can't go wrong with these things absolutely yeah. so we can park this aside Okay, so I think we're almost out. Uh, the last thing we received this week, ah, Aramax. Ah, yes, this is okay. very interesting, actually. The corner weight scale by Aramax. We've got Nick joining us. Hi, Nick. A bit late. Hello. And they're inspecting their new house, so. Very good. So really? you moved in already. When do we get to inspect it? <laughs> when is the housewarming party, Nick? <laughs> You're waiting here. Maybe we do the Christmas party up there. Hey, we, we, we could do the uh, four-wheel measurement of this thing, couldn't we? We could do that, actually. Let's see. So, just pulled out uh, each of the, uh, uh, the... I guess these will be the weight sensors, because these hook up to the central um, uh, controller. So we're just going to power it up with this LiPo here. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Should we show this? Okay. Uh, let's see. Alright, we've got live. And we plug in all these corners. Okay, so I've got front, right, front, left over here, and then go on there. So, what order you got yours in? You got okay, like that. Left on this side, left on that side, left over there. All right. So, if we just do a untangle, like yeah. So, so what you might is... see? Can you sort of see that the 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 little display is lit, but it might be a bit dark there to see. Probably is a bit hard to see. So that's showing the weight between these four sensors. So actually, let's just let's so let's see if we can this put that one. A bit special. So what this does is effectively giving you the weight in each wheel, and when you race um, touring cars or buggies, you use this one to measure the weight distribution across the different the four corners of the car and it's particularly useful to check um, your setup there we go how balanced is this one not, not very not very not very it seems <laughs> very random actually it looks yeah it's, it's a bit although we haven't got it all straight as such there we go is that better it's it's, it's right heavy yeah yeah definitely so there must be, be the, the spare like wheel on on one side yeah maybe like a real-life dyno for a car. Mm. Mm. Well, for a matter of fact, they do actually dyno for RC car as well. They'll yeah, be yeah, very interesting they, they to spin them up. They spin them up. Yep, yep. yep. But uh, very useful tool to set up your car. It's quite interesting as you move your battery backwards and forwards, or you move to different electronics from one side or the other of the car. Yeah. You can you can adjust your uh, weight distribution quite yep. a lot. It's, it's very important, particularly with acceleration and um, yep. cornering. And also for jumping when you go off-road, you, uh, yes. you want to have it as balanced as you can, otherwise you know, you, you, if it's quite balanced, you can control it in the air quite a bit. Yep. With your steering, as you jump it, you can steer the wheel and you can just control the balance of the car uh, in the air really. Mm. So, 
very useful. Likewise in touring cars actually, when you when you're racing on road, um, it's definitely important to have the car really set and uh, even yes. uh, left to right specifically. Yes. Uh, front to rear can be adjusted based on on your um, uh, on the on the track and the setup that you better prefer really. Yeah. So, yeah, so very useful because even even the weight between batteries can be different. Definitely. So they may look the same, but when you put it in there, the balance of the car changes. Absolutely. So when you go racing, it's very important that you always run the same type of battery. Otherwise, every time you put a different battery, you may change the weight distribution. Yes. Which may be only a few grams, but a few grams on a lightweight kind of car is actually quite um, quite uh, um, quite a bit at the end. Yeah. So from Aramax, the corner weight scale. Looks really nice. So very well made. That's all aluminium casing. Yes. And you've got your four uh, individual scales. Yep. And the plugs. So you can plug it into a power supply or if you battery charge it. Well, power supply ideally. Yeah. Mm. Or your battery as well, for yes. a matter of fact. So some of the specialty tools that um, help you make go faster. Definitely. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So, very good. Yeah. All right, let's put this away. I think we are coming to the end today. So we've got some questions of anything at all? No. Um, we did have one question from Nick asking if you missed out on the Black Friday kit deals. No yet. They're, they're, they're going, are they? Uh, we're the, as I mentioned in the chat, we are going to be running a Black Friday deal over the weekend, so right. everyone has to sign up for the newsletter to be yes. part of that. So, so yes. Nick, Nick, have you signed up? If you haven't, do it right now. Jump on it. That's it. So There will be emails coming through the weekend with some vouchers and some um, discounts, so jump on those and uh, make the most of it yeah so looks like in the next couple of weeks there'll be quite a bit of stock arriving so there's will be scholastic busters 2020 version arriving hopefully late next week yeah there'll be a top up of trucks the last one for the year so well, it's less than four weeks of christmas absolutely mm. and perhaps some tamiya kits restocks wow maybe wow maybe maybe, maybe. and Cross some paints fingers. and some paints and some paints. a couple of blacks and a couple of whites oh, i almost don't know what they look like Yes, we haven't seen them for a bit. Mm. So they'll be good. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people are missing those. So less. definitely looking forward to Scalexic, maybe some new cars. So yeah. hopefully next week at this time, we'll mm -hmm. be able to show you some new some new slot cars as well. So Yeah. Okay, so let's see if uh, we have any questions. Otherwise, we may be at the end today. Yep. Uh, I think you've got one more thing. Else. What have I forgotten? Oh, yes. Oh, that's pretty yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, let's yeah. park okay. this one. Forgot that one. All right. So... Everyone may be uh, familiar with Hornby being, um, it's a centenary. So they've been releasing some centenary sets. And one of their special sets is this particular Rovex kit. Okay, so Rovex, um, they were a company that um, uh, started off making um, uh, toy cars after the war. Right. And the guy that ran the company um, uh, became an expert in injection molding very good quality right. stuff and then because of his name Rovex he was actually making a rover and he got in trouble for that because it's so similar, similar. to the name of similar. rover so he, he was asked to make a train set right um, for Marks and Spencer which is a department store and um, because I was so impressed with his car and so he came up with the uh, the train set now the unfortunate thing is because Marks and Spencer was so massive they put in a massive order and he couldn't get the finances to, to make it happen. complete it properly so he actually sold the company uh, which became Triang, and then Triang made sets, so they carried on the Rovex um, tradition of the sets with the Triang name, and then that became Hornby. So that's how the Hornby sets have come about. So this Interesting. is this is where it began with the Rovex set, and this is the same locomotive that was in that original set. Rovex, the, the shape of it. So this is limited to 1,000 um, worldwide, and each one of these sets has got a, um, a certificate inside of authentic. Let's have a look. Yep. Let's see if uh, we can open it nicely. So it's a very thick box, so it's not your standard type of set box. Here we go. So that's your certificate here. So this is so number... You've got a blurb there as well. 950. Um, so obviously the track and the controller are the traditional the current Hornby controllers. But so what's nice is actually the locomotive itself. So you've got the loco there. We're so not going to open this one because it's uh, being a limited edition. That's we right. We'll just have a quick look at it. it. That's about that it. So you've got the loco, and then there's two passenger carriages, which are very yes. nice. 
so to identical characters like that. And then of course you've got the set which makes up the uh, the basic oval. Yep. And you got the controller and the power supply. Rerela. Yep, Rerela. Rerela. And is there any points? No, that's no, just a novel. So yes. Just so if you're interested in collecting, I mean for this one for the, the centenary, I mean this, this is pretty special. Yeah, it does have the 1920 to 2020 logo, yep. which is uh, characteristic of all the centenary re-releases for for this year. Yeah, very nice, uh, very nice set. Yeah, it's good stuff. So I'm I'm sure there will be more sets coming out throughout the year, although the year's almost finished. Oh, so. oh that's pretty important. Let's put isn't it back it? in. Let's see if we can open it because there was that other one that was released, the Duplo. The Duplo. There's been quite a few different. Um, the Stevenson's rocket. The Stevenson's rocket. Yep. Um, there was there's quite a few different uh, different ones actually. And a good few accessories too. And the pan and the mug and all that. So yes, and the pin. Yes, and the, that's right. So yes. very nice, very nice uh, year for Hornby actually. Mm. We've seen quite a lot of stuff coming through, which is which is positive. So I guess on this one we are gonna close the live for today. Gonna call it a. I think so. Call it a day. Unless we have questions coming, we'll give another. 30 seconds for questions. Yep. Give us a question, any question. Anything in the store, totally unrelated to what we've already talked about. Happy, Happy to, to go and grab something or talk Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Yep. Otherwise, we'll uh, leave you to the weekend. Hopefully, it's going to be a sunny weekend down here in Melbourne, apparently. Well, it's uh, it's 30 or today. So, we're getting way into summer weather. So Absolutely. Anyone who's watching from the Northern Hemisphere that's feeling really cold, well, we're feeling really hot. So... But we did feel cold about <laughs> three months ago when yes. we were doing our live from the garage. Yes, oh, I was right. doing the live from the garage. Yes. You were in your living room I was at in, the time. I'll, yeah, I was in heated comfort. But that's a different story. So 37 in Bendigo. That's uh, keeping toasty. Nick, very good. Uh, I'll ask a question. Sure. Um, with regards to the Dementor, Python and such, yep. do you know if Biddy Design are going to make any polycarbonate replacement bodies? Pro probably not. Have? Probably not. Um, they tend to focus more on the race cars, the uh, the one we race at the uh, you know different race track. You may be able to retrofit um, a BT Design body for the Python actually, which is the closest to the buggy that BT Design does. Yeah, so you'll but, be able to change the look, but the racing bodies tend to be not as strong as these super tough ones that are exactly thinking it's doing 100 kilometers now. Yeah, very true. That. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They tend to be really lightweight actually, so yes. it, it may look better but won't last very long. No problem. Yeah. Very good. All right then, with this one. Well, thank, you everyone. thank you everyone for watching. Thanks again, we'll guys. We'll see you next Friday, 2 p.m. Yes. Same place. All right. All right then, thank Catch you for watching. Time. Have Remember a good the weekend. competition. Yes, don't forget the competition. Yes.